In this tutorial, we will be looking at uh, modeling the Rossi cattle. I've already brought in an image. Um, let's uh, move that to an image layer. And move this one to the curves layer. Okay, lock the image. Now this uh, rectangle is uh, 220 in width. Um, the dimension of the cattle is set to be 220 in diameter and also in height. But it looks a little bit off. Um, so I'll just keep uh, the width as reference. Uh, I've already drawn one single curve here indicating the direction of the cone and I'll mirror that one over to over the uh, y-axis and here you see that uh, probably my image is not dead center while the um, rectangle is and you can move that uh, to uh, the center by enabling the snappy dragging and then moving with one of the arrow keys and then typing zero enter and that should uh, make it dead center you see that uh, <clears throat> the cone is uh, is correct so trimming off the extents I'm probably moving that picture a little bit with the uh, option and arrow keys. Okay, that looks like pretty close. Then I'll draw a single sphere here drawing it from from the tip of those two lines Holding shift to define it in one direction. And I'm um, probably moving it up a bit. And that seems to be fine. Um, now I can use this uh, sphere to trim off these curves and then make a line from these two ends scale that a bit and use that one to trim off that part of the sphere and then delete it okay now we can also draw a line across define where the handle is going to be I'm not sure if this is really precisely uh, manufactured uh, to me it looks like that top of the handle should be matching with uh, the spout and uh, this core so I'll split this line with this curve, uh, we delete it. Well, not, let's not delete it, but scale it a bit for the handle for later use. Like that. So now I have two curves. 
and I'll revolve the curve around my midpoint here, choosing full circle. Do the same for the top part, holding shift, full circle. And then uh, we'll take a look at modeling the spout. Now you'll see it, um, it has a certain uh, curved line and that's because if you intersect a flat part with a uh, cone you will get that kind of curve so I'll start by drawing um, a line from this end here just an arbitrary uh, distance Again, holding shift, ending the line. And now I'm going to extrude that with history on. So I'll turn on history. And um, make an extrude of it. Uh, not B for both sides. So uh, moving it down, just extending quite a bit. And then I'm going to intersect that shape with the cone. So intersect will uh, intersect that shape with the cone, effect of the plane with the cone. Now that is in place, I can turn on the control points with F10 for that single curve. Select this end, now move it out. You'll see the uh, resulting extrusion will update, but also the intersection curve, that's this one, will update while I move that curve. And now in my front view, I can look at that intersection and see how it matches with uh, the extrusion. And now I see I've, I've done one thing not completely correct. So I'll select that surface, turn on control points for the surface, and then move those lower points in a bit in fact um, I have to tell a little bit about uh, extrusions here uh, extrusions are kind of lightweight objects in Rhino and uh, personally I don't really like those because right now I cannot really alter this extrusion like I want it. Uh, you see it's, it's like defined like a line and a direction of extrusion. So if I move this point, it also moves uh, the top line and I don't want that. So I need to explode it into a normal surface again. Um, and then turn on its control points and then you'll see I will have two points and those I will um, move this way until it matches with uh, the direction of the spout let's do the intersection again Turn on the control points for the surface. 
now I'm starting to move those points uh, out until that curve more or less resembles uh, the intersection I need. So you see it's uh, already quite close. So let's leave it like that. Uh, so that makes one part of the spout. Don't need the image for now. Then mirror this one over to the other opposite side. We can do this by uh, the x-axis. Here you also see why it's important to, to uh, model around the origin in order to be able to do these kinds of uh, quick mirrors, arrays, things like that. Uh, we'll move the cover to a new layer and work on that uh, later on. Hide it for now. I can uh, move these to another layer as well. Let's call this uh, reference curves and um, can I use these to start trimming. Uh, here you see that uh, this uh, revolved shape has its seam across the spout and um, I prefer to, if I have to do modeling work, um, I prefer to have no seams in areas where I need to do some modeling work. So. I prefer to rotate this shape 90 degrees and then start my trimming. So joining these two. So now it's a single poly surface and then select this one and trim. Trim the inside of the handle, or oh, sorry, of the spout, and then use the spout. Oh, I see I didn't do it correctly here. Of course, I have to make sure that uh, that spout is uh, aligned with the top. So let's do that first. Move to the top, and you see I'm using. Uh, if you select an object, you want to move it uh, from this edge to that edge. I can align that by moving the gumball with the option, uh, sorry, the command key, then releasing. Control on window, so you start dragging with control or command key pressed, then release and snap to something, and then use this to snap to that end. Okay, so now it's uh, correctly in place. I might need to check here if it's still aligned well. It's not too bad. Let's check the intersection again. It's, uh, it's pretty good. So, selecting these two and trim away this part of the spout and also this part of the kettle. 
Okay, once that's done, we can join this into a single object which uh, has a flat end, so we can close it by using cap. <clears throat> now with, uh, with shell, we should be able to shell this out. That not always goes well in Rhino. Uh, shelling and booleans, fillets, or uh, computationally intensive tasks, and also uh, are prone to failure in Rhino. So be aware of that. So let's see how it uh, works today. Um, let's assume a thickness of one millimeter and delete that part. And here you see that it uh, gives me a shell result not being solid. So this often happens. And uh, looking up closer, uh, you see that part of the inner cone has been removed. So that means uh, we have an open, uh, an open surface here. Um, uh, there are several ways to correcting these kinds of issues. Um, I think for now what we can do is uh, revolve this edge here around uh, zero. Uh, enter to use the Z axis. And now not choosing full circle, but choosing, holding shift and choosing this as a starting point, and then choosing this as an end point. Okay. Then we'll <coughs> extract these two surfaces without copying and see if they intersect well with that cone we just part of the cone we just created and it seems it does so let's see if it joins together and it seems to be joining into one close and two open poly surfaces So we have uh, some small slivers here, which we can delete. <clears throat> okay. So looking at the picture again, let's now focus on uh, the handle. We still have that curve here, um, and what I'll do is I'm going to make a line that goes from this end using quad points to this end perpendicular or quad. Okay. Let's move the body to another layer. And I get another color. Hide it for now. <clears throat> so this will be the top of the handle. And uh, We'll make another vertical line here. Let's look at what the uh, exact thickness will be for that handle. Eyeballing, let's say four millimeters. So 
I'm making a copy at four. I can do this by uh, dragging and then tapping the option once, typing four and release. Another way is to um, select that curve and option click or control click on Windows and then typing in this case minus four. We'll also make a copy. Do the same here. Tapping the option key once, typing four, space and release. I'll do the same here. Um, in fact, I will not do the same here. I will here make an offset of it. Offset. Distance four again. And I'll make a line that goes from this point perpendicular. Um, Okay, so it looks like I have made a solid offset. That's not really necessary. So delete these ends after exploding. Now with connect, I can connect curve ends together. And do the same here. And then use this one to trim okay. Do another line here. Trim this curve. and use these to trim these ends okay so now we have our closed shape we can join it into single okay and now let's see what the uh, radius should be of the fillets so let's assume a fillet here of five and an inner radius of one. It's not exactly the same, but uh, I think it looks good. So now that we have that curve, we have to give it a certain width, extrusion depth. Um, I don't really have the reference for this, but uh, we'll just look at uh, the complete shape and judge what it should be. So extrusion with extrude curve. I choose the both sides option and then just uh, eyeball what is correct. It's probably something like uh, nine millimeters on both sides, nine, giving a total width of uh, 18 millimeters. Now, this is um, the basis of this model. Of course, you will see that uh, the handle doesn't really connect to this body. And this is something more advanced. Uh, I'll show you how this is done. I'll make a copy of this handle. Make another handle flat, copy.
copy objects to that layer. So now I have two, the same, we'll hide the flat handle. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, extract these surfaces. Delete the inner ones. And I'm going to create a curve on this end. Let's turn on knots here. So snapping to that uh, to that knot and. Okay, so now I have that curve, delete this end, and showing back the body. And I'm going to pull this curve to the body so that the curve is laying on, onto the surface. Using pull, I can delete the input. You see now it follows that curvature. I'll extract as a copy this surface of the body and move that to handle flat and hide the body. Sorry, I moved that to, uh, to handle copy. Okay, now I can use that curve to trim part of the surface I don't need. And then I can start making a transition between these two surfaces. I do that with BlendSurf. And then uh, locking the two uh, handles together I'm going to eyeball until it more or less follows the curvature of the uh, original fillet. Something like that. Okay. Once that's done, I can uh, join the resulting surfaces. And then offset the surfaces with offset serve, uh, flipping direction to move them in, choosing solid for units. And now I have a handle that uh, follows the curvature of the body. For the spout, sorry, for the um, top cone, this part, we can also uh, shell that out. <clears throat> but let's first um, cap it and then add a bit of a uh, edge so that uh, we can mount it into the body. I'll make a circle here from center. And let's choose end here only.
there's my end. And then offset the curve. Two units. And extrude that in one direction, let's say 12 millimeters. <clears throat> and then Boolean the two together. And let's see if we uh, can shell this. And it seems to show uh, correctly. This one we can cap to close the ends. And again, let's add some uh, fillets uh, visually to uh, reduce the sharpness of the appearance. And add some metal shade shader to it. Highly polished. And that uh, concludes this tutorial.